All right, so I hope you all enjoyed the build time lapse. Uh, my editor had such a great time doing it. I actually really liked how it turned out because it is honestly, I would say, very different than the previous videos because of the editing style, the new things that she tried, different effects, stuff like that. And I also want to point out that since we're also very bad at editing videos and doing that stuff, we finally figured out how to make the videos turn out looking even higher quality than before because we didn't change one simple setting, which is, you know, adjusting the sequence settings when you're editing in Premiere. So now that we did that, the video is, gonna, is looking awesome, super high quality, really nice. So yeah, anyways, let me just get right into the stuff I wanted to say. So as y'all can see, this is a Assassin's and Assassin's Creed Valhalla themed PC. And I want to say that it is probably the best work I've done. The spray painting, the etching, basically the camera work was probably the best that we've done ever. Because of all the practice, because of all the experimenting that we did, it basically showed how far I got in this video. And I'm very happy that it turned out the way it did. So <clears throat> let's get right into it. So the specs that I used was a Ryzen 3800 XT. It's the one that is specifically picked, has a higher boost clock, as is able to get that higher boost clock. I also used a B550 MSI MPG Gaming Plus. The reason why I picked that one is specifically because it was fully black. It matched the theme that I wanted to do. And yeah, the CPU, like I said, has a higher boost clock, so I wanted to hit that, uh, hit a higher FPS when I'm playing games, stuff like that. Next is the graphics card. I did choose a Asus ROG 5700 XT, right? I didn't get any of the new cards because it was almost impossible to get it and I felt like there was no need because the recommended specs for Valhalla was a 5700 XT if you're playing at 1440p. And since if you are playing at 1440p, you could play it at 1080p, whatever, everything under it. So yeah. That's that. And also the Strix looks very nice. The black finish, the ROG eye, all of that I think really matched the build too. So that is also one of the reasons why I use that. The next thing is the memory. So I chose a 16 gigabyte kit of Crucial Ballistics RAM. Again, it also matched the theme really, really well. It's black with white, what, what's that called? white words, white letters, yes. It's black RAM with the white cru crucial letters on the heatsink. So that's one reason why I also chose it. Next would be the case. The case I did choose something that was on sale. It was cheaper, you know, I didn't, I don't feel good destroying, potentially destroying a very beautiful case. So I did get the Fantec P400, but I got it for around $50 with tax, but that was because of a gift card and on, it was on sale. I think it was on sale for $60, plus the gift card pushed it down to 45 or so, and then that's why it's like $50. That's why I got it for $50. But I do wanna say the Fantech P400 was really easy to take apart. I didn't expect it to be that easy. It was literally just Phillips head screws, to take everything out the top, uh, the top panel, front panel, well, the top panel was, the, was why it was easier to take it apart. But yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was also a very nice case to build in. And, you know, I think it turned out nice. Next would be the power supply. I do want to point out I am reusing it from the previous Halo build because, you know, it's the only one I had lying around. And I do want to say, I didn't think about it when I was recording it. Why use silver power supply screws when I had black ones, right? But I never, I didn't think about that, so I used silver screws. And y'all could see in the video that it wasn't a good choice. But since it's in the back, it's whatever. No one's going to be able to see it. It wasn't shown that much. So yeah, that's that. 
And then the most important change that I did or addition was I started off with the Noctua NHU12S cooler. I wanted it because it was fully black. It matches the build. But the issue I thought was that it's a huge heat sink and it might block half of the etching because I wanted the etching to pop out and show because of how nice it was and the added characteristics to the case, I was really skeptical about how well it will fit. And in the end, I did think it didn't fit too well. So I did end up swapping it for an AIO. I switched the Corsair H100i RGB XT edition. So I think that actually played a lot better, right? Because it didn't obstruct the etching as much as it did if I used the Noctua cooler and it was all black. It added a nice white LED in the back, even though it's not the same same brightness, same color accuracy or color white as the LED strips around the case. But I think it looks better because there wasn't that huge black heat sink in the back. So that was the major change that I did halfway through the video. As y'all could see, I did change it out at the end. And one little thing I want to point out, don't do what I do, put in all your radiator screws. Why I did that was one, once I take it apart, it's gonna be easier, and two, I only grabbed six screws, which isn't too smart. But yeah, please put in all your screws, that'll be, it's a lot better. All right, so let's get into the more important part, or at least the more important stuff that I wanted to do, which was the spray painting and the, basically the thoughts behind why I did what I did. So the spray painting, I do wanna say again, I think it's probably the best I did. It looked nice, it was even, there was very rarely, there's very little mistakes. And that is also because I did prep it correctly. I did take, you know, I did practice more with spray painting. I wasn't super close up, you know, just drowning the, uh, what's that called, the panels with paint. So it did turn out well. I started off with a quick coat where I got most of the panels painted. I let it dry a bit, then I repainted another one. I did that about three times per panel. So the front, back, front, side, and then the top panel. And I also, before I did all of this, which I didn't do before, which I do highly recommend you do, is prepping it. So I sanded it with a 60 grit sandpaper. Then I used a 220 grit sandpaper to, you know, fine it all, uh, make it smooth. So that actually let the paint stick onto the product a lot better. So that makes it look nicer too. And in the end, I use a matte clear coat to spray everything to make sure there's no scratches, any of that, just to prevent any damages. And I think, you know, it's honestly much better than I expected. If I'm gonna be honest, it's so much nicer. Not just in pictures, not just recorded, but in person, I can't see the imperfections. Compared to the Halo computer, I did see imperfections. I wasn't exactly extremely happy with how it did, but for my first build, first spray paint job, I think it looked all right. But this time, I think huge step up. And I'm very, very happy to be able to get to this level after practicing so, so much. So honestly, the next builds I think will be will look even better with more improvements. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. And then the next modification that I did do to the case was etching. Etching is something that I really enjoyed and I really liked because it to me it adds a different characteristics to the case. With the LED lights on, with the certain interior basically makes the etching pop out. I did use this etching as an opportunity to try something new, so adding glasswork, etc. but also to practice, you know, Photoshop. Yes, I could have gotten the logo, Valhalla logo online, but I want to use this as an excuse to practice how to use Photoshop, so I used the pen tool to trace everything, and it honestly gave me another skill to learn, and the etching did come out very nice because even 
with me, you know, trying to match all the curves and uh, what are those little details in the Valhalla logo. But in the end, I do think it does add a different characteristics, and I also really, really like it. After you shine the LEDs on it, it just pops out at you, especially at night when it's just sitting next to you. It just looks so nice. I don't know. It, it's awesome. I just think it's so cool. <laughs> but yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. It is honestly such a learning experience for me because I could practice so much and do what I like to do. And before I get to the benchmarks, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's watching. And please let me know if there's anything I should have done differently or, you know, any suggestions next time to how I can make it look even better. Or, you know, if I did something wrong, also let me know that. All right, anyways, here are the benchmarks. I did do a Valhalla benchmark, of course, I have to. And I did one for Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey. And also did one for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I didn't do it so much because of the time. I have you know, school and stuff, but next time I'll definitely add more benchmarks. But for this, I did do ultra high, very high, high, medium, and low for both Assassin's Creed games. And for Black Ops Cold War, I did ultra, I did high, medium, and low. But for the low settings, I put all the effects down. So like dynamic shadows, uh, what's it called? The explosions effect. I I disabled all of that for the low settings. And yeah. Anyways, thank you again. Here are the benchmarks.